Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. Before we jump in, thanks so much for all your great feedback, all the likes, the emails, the Twitter DMs, love it all, really means a lot to me. This week, I've got another story for you and three great launches. All right, let's go all the way back to 1988. I'm working at this little startup in Maryland. I'm VP of engineering, doing some pretty cool stuff, but kind of out of the blue, I get this opportunity to join Microsoft. Look at it, decide it's not quite the right time for me or for my family, but then kind of stuck in the back of my head. And for almost a decade after that, we watched Microsoft grow and prosper and watched so many good things happen out in Seattle. And I just had this feeling that I should be in the Emerald City and that I kind of missed out on this opportunity. Well, it's sometime in 1997, and they call me back again and say, Jeff, we really want to find a way to get you onto our team. And opportunity actually knocked twice. And I'm thinking, well, worst comes to worst, I just get a free trip to Seattle, one of my favorite cities, so I'll take it. Out to Seattle, through the interview loop, offer comes through. This time it's like, oh, wow, we should try this again. Chat with the family, decide it's time for a, a big family adventure. I signed up for a three year deal with relocation and starting bonus and vesting schedule, all the usual kind of stuff. So I'm really committed to this. My family's really young, all five kids, we gotta switch into new schools, but they're super excited for this brand new adventure. And we're like, we're gonna do it. We're gonna go to Seattle, we're gonna have some fun, probably stay there for a couple years and, and then move back. We move, settle in a little bit. And I haven't even started my job yet, but I'm thinking, wow, it's kind of like I've, I'm now kind of in the big time. I'm in the major leagues and felt like this huge step up for me. First day, get the badge. There's a company cafeteria. There's just all the corporate trappings, all this really cool stuff I really didn't even know about before. I'm part of the Visual Basic team. Lots of great folks on that team and really helped me to settle in to the team and to, to Seattle. Now, looking back on this, this is actually my first genuine corporate experience, and it really wasn't very easy for me. It was a lot of protocol I didn't understand. It was sometimes confusing what was really going on and when people kind of say one thing and it really has this bigger meaning. A, a bit of a different language, a different culture than what I was accustomed to, and a bit of a struggle to fit in. As I said, I was on the Visual Basic 6 team, turned out to be the, the last release of this amazing product. Now, before I go any further, I, I do wanna say one really important thing. This was one team, it was well over 20 years ago. I've changed, the company's changed, everything's different, it's obviously really better now, and so don't take anything of what I say now as this is how Microsoft is now, but, but stick with me for a bit, because I, I think there's a great lesson in this story. So I'm working on Visual Basic 6 and I own part of it. And I find some kind of a bug report comes in that I need to fix in what I'm building. Now, if you've been in the industry for a long time, you probably remember this term of shrink wrapped software. Shrink wrapped software comes in an actual cardboard box with plastic around it. And the production logistics of doing shrink wrap software mean you only get to actually do a new version and ship a new version every couple years. You go through this really, really long involved process to build, test, deliver, package, ship. Then you say, well, that took us way too many years. We're gonna to try to do it a little bit faster the next time around. But the, the feedback loop is really, really slow. To me, the real challenge here is you leave a bug and your customers are gonna be stuck with it for a really, really long time. And just not the, like, the way I like to work. We're about 18 months before shipment. We're starting to close down on the bug list and bug report comes in and look at it. Looks really, really easy to fix. Put that fix in, it is literally a one line, very, very low risk fix. Goes through the, the check-in procedure, it's rejected. Way too risky. And I'm thinking, how risky could this be? It's, it's one line, if the unlikely event this breaks something else, our test will find it tomorrow. Really no risk at all. I argue that this is gonna hurt our customers and it's gonna like make the product less than awesome. And the, the little committee that's evaluating all the bugs, they kind of look at me with a little bit of like, you don't quite get it yet, Jeff. 
And they just say, and, and this stuck with me to this day. They said, well, that'd be true in a regular company, but we're Microsoft. I listened to this for a second and I let it sit in and I'm kind of stunned. I don't really know how to respond. And they're basically saying, we're so special and we're so awesome that the regular rules just don't apply. And almost the bigger message to me was, well, we don't need to obsess over our customers. And I think, oh, so this is how it is. I'm not ready to give up yet. I think back to my interview loop and I remember one of the senior folks that I'd interview with. I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna go talk to them and surely they're gonna see it my way and they're gonna help to, to, uh, to, to right this, this wrong. I, I book a meeting with them and to make it really, really clear that I'm serious, I, I book it an in-person meeting rather than just doing some emails and I'm running a little dev team. I've got three great folks on my team that have been there for a long time. And we, we just decide, you know what? We really believe in this and we wanna fix this. We're gonna show up in person just to show just how serious we are. Time comes for the meeting and it's me and my team of our, our three devs. Uh, we had Van and uh, Mike and Kirk, my, my three, three awesome devs I worked with. We're walking across campus, we're strategizing, we're like, Kind of like sight. It's like we are going to make a difference here. We're going to plead our case. This person's going to hear the details, and surely they're going to get it, right? We're 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 so excited for the fact that we're going to make things awesome. We get there and we make our case. We share all the details. Looks at me, thinks for a bit, says, "Well, nah. We just need to be really consistent." Oh, okay. So again, this is how it is. Me and my team, we just walk back to our building and we're, we're pretty much demoralized. We're, we're just knowingly shipping a, a somewhat broken product and we're, we're making it not as, as awesome as it could be. And at least for that day, we say, you know, sometimes this is just our job. It's not the adventure that we, we thought we signed up for. Now, 20 plus years later, I kind of still remember letting customers down. And I, I don't even remember what the bug was. If, if you were a VB6 user and you hit my bug, I'm, I'm actually really, really sorry. All right, so where am I? Well, well, I'm, I'm two plus years in at, at my, my, of my three-year commitment. I'm kind of thinking this is maybe not the, the best place for me. I should probably find something new to do for my next project. I, I did VB6, I worked on visualstudio.net start talking to some teams about some, some new, new projects. Not quite sure where my, my tech future lies at this point, but I, I'm always liking to get into new things early. I hear someone mention some acronyms I haven't heard before. Things like WSDL and SOAP and UDDI and CORBA. If you've been around for a while, you know that these are all different kinds of really interesting web service technologies. 20, 24 years ago, they were new and interesting. The, the team said, hey, Jeff, um, we see this stuff's kind of new and interesting. Why don't you start taking a look, figure out how this might fit into our, our product? I, I blended into this my interest in XML and started looking at all these things together and saying, this is actually pretty interesting stuff. I, I can really see the, the technical, technological value of this. I can see what this, how this would be great for our customers started to see a bit of a, of a path forward for myself and thinking this is, this is my future. Actually helped to design some, some web services tools and features and got a bit of experience with it. But my, my three years were up and I'm just, I'm just out of here. I'm ready to do something new. Get some great consulting lined up and I'm having a, a meeting with a, a venture capital friend of mine. They had made some great money in the, the dot com boom and looking to invest it and get some more startups going. And I'm, I've got some cool ideas of my own and we're, we're getting together. I start telling him all about web services and I made kind of the classic blunder. I started just unloading on him every deep, geeky, technical thing I could use to impress him. The, the networks, the protocols, the fact that it worked through port 80, the, the schemas, the schema generators, every deep, geeky thing I could think of. And I was, I really thought, I was like proving myself to him, just like show that I, I knew what I was talking about when it came to web services. 
he listened patiently for a bit and then he kind of like looked up and rolled a bit and he, he sighs and I think he realized this is just one more geeky guy who can't sell anything to, to save his life. But he, he was quiet for a bit, pursed his lips, kind of tried to get his thoughts and he just asked me one quick question, actually two questions. He said, well, so Jeff, um, what about the customers? What does this do for them? I was really quiet and suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, I kind of fell into my own trap. I'm like so deep in the protocol and the code, I actually forgot all about the customers. Now it was my turn to be quiet. And I, I, I formed my thoughts for a bit and I just started talking about all the, for, for at this point, for several years, I'd been building up all these use cases in my head of this is why web services would be awesome. These are the things you could build. This would be great for customers. I just kind of went into high speed, full blast mode. And I started talking and talking and talking. He could not get in a word edgewise. Close to an hour later, he puts his hand up, like slow down. I, I've, I've actually heard enough at this point. And we had to, had to wrap things up, but he said, well, okay, Jeff, now I actually get it. Clearly you do understand your customers and their needs. Important safety tip. Be sure to lead with the customer stuff first. Save all that awesome geeky stuff for later. So a week or so later, I got this awesome email from him and he said, hey, Jeff, wonderful to meet with you. I got some companies in my portfolio that are doing some pretty cool stuff with web services. I think if you could help them out from time to time, give them a better customer vision, that'd be pretty awesome. Thought about that for like three microseconds. Deal. Let's do it. So I got to consult on web services for a couple of years, got to work with a lot of really cool companies, building all different kinds of web services tools, helped to give them a bit of customer vision. And then story I've told before, used everything I'd learned, used the customer obsession, all the tech to actually join Amazon. And the rest has been almost 19 years of, of truly awesome history. What did I learn from all this? Well, I really learned that customers matter. You always have to put them first. But I also learned that sometimes you get to the Emerald City and it's not exactly what you thought it was gonna be. And that's my story for you today. So today I've got three launches for you. And as I looked at these, I think that they show really three different types or levels of customer obsession. The first one is tags and identifiers for your VPC security group rules. The big picture here is it's gonna make it easier for you to manage your VPC security groups. From the very beginning, there were no identifiers and there were no tags associated with your security group rules. And you had to kind of look at the port and the protocol and the IP addresses to figure out what each rule was all about. We've made this a whole lot better. There's now an identifier and you can put tags on each of your security group rules. The identifiers always start with SGR and all of your existing rules already have identifiers. You can also add up to 50 tags per rule. As a result of all this, it's gonna be much easier for you to track, reference, and manage all of your, your rules. This probably seems really simple, but I think it's gonna make your management job a whole lot easier. To learn more, you can read the blog post. Next up, we've got object storage for LightSail. If you don't know LightSail, let me tell you just a bit about it. The idea is it's gonna make it easy for you to get started with a pre-configured Linux or Windows application stack. You run it inside of a nice managed environment. With LightSail, you get low predictable pricing. There's seven different plans. Each plan gives you a defined amount of CPU power, storage, and data transfer. So with all that as background, what's actually new? We got this great new object storage model for you. There's three plans. You get five, 100, or 250 gigabytes of storage and a, a associated amount of data transfer to suit. And then the plans go for $1, $3, or $5 a month. Super simple to use. You create a bucket within the light cell console. You can upload, set permissions, check out metrics, and deal with versioning. You can read the what's new to learn a whole lot more. And finally, a brand new app called the Workflow Studio. You probably know all about step functions. I think I've talked to you about them a time or two in the past. These are so cool. You can compose multiple AWS services into workflows. The enterprise folks like to call this an orchestration service. The step function workflows are scalable and fault tolerant and really, really powerful. 
Up until now, you had to specify them in text form using the Amazon States language. You can still do that, but now we're going to make them even easier to build with the new Workflow Studio. This is a visual tool. You simply drag and drop your flow elements and your task states. Then you click on each one. You configure the states and any data transformations that go from step to step. And you can use this to connect a whole lot of different AWS services. Let me see if I can get through the whole list. Lambda, SNS, SQS, ECS, EKS, Glue, EventBridge, Batch, Athena, CodeBuild, EMR, Dynamo, DynamoDB, SageMaker, and a whole lot more to come. There's also a whole bunch of really cool flow control. You can do serial execution, parallel execution, you can wait for completion, you can iterate across elements in an array, you can do mapping, and a whole lot more. My colleague Marcia has a very helpful, really detailed blog post, urge you to take a look. This is one of those things you definitely want to check it out, give it a shot, and let me know what you think. So that's all I've got for you this week. Really hope you enjoyed my story and the three launches. I love your comments. Always please keep them coming, read them all. You can click through, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment. We'd also love it if you share this video with your colleagues and your, your friends and your family and your, your pets. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.